वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अपर्णा वाटवे फैकल्टी ऑफ टाटा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस दिस मॉड्यूल इज ऑन इंटरनेशनल एग्रीमेंट्स ऑन एग्रीकल्चर एंड ट्रेड इट इज पार्ट ऑफ एनवायरमेंट एंड सोसाइटी पेपर इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल फर्स्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज एग्रो बायोडाइवर्सिटी देन वी विल लुक एट सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट इंटरनेशनल एग्रीमेंट्स which have brought changes in the world's agriculture we will look at some of the e indian laws and finally at the end of it we will look at how people are affected by changes in agriculture humans depend on agriculture for their basic need in the early phases all humans were hunter gatherers they hunted animals and also collected roots tubers fruits and leaves from the wild but this was a very risky living one was never sure of getting enough food for the day there could be long periods when people had to go hungry there was no food security at this stage we were just like any other animal on the earth all this was changed through discovery of farming agriculture gave us control over food it gave us security agriculture was possible through a process of domestication in this process wild crop or wild animals are grown in controlled conditions plants or animals with desired traits are selected and they are grown sometimes their characteristics can be combined by making hybrids after generations of selective breeding we get a plant or animal which is very different from the wild one take a look at your pet dog it sits next to you it plays with you is it in any way similar to the wild wolf yet all dogs are selectively bred from wolves domestication has helped us to create new animals and new plants farmers and pastoral communities have conducted countless domestications all over the world they were all scientists in their own rights the rice that is found in the wild is too hard to eat but just take a look at the number of rice varieties that we find today in the market long grain biryani rice from north india rich flavored purple rice from northeast india and there are many other rice varieties which are originally coming from the wild rice diversity of crops and animals which were created by people's experiments is known as domesticated biodiversity it is also called agro biodiversity agro biodiversity is as important as wild biodiversity protection of agro biodiversity is a matter of concern today protecting crops and protecting livestock varieties protects our food source without these we will be back to where we started in the evolution agro biodiversity is a product of cultural and environmental diversity communities lived in different environments they worked on plants available to them because of this we find different plants and different animals grown by people in different areas each indigenous community has their own varieties of crops if we go to coastal india we will find rice which can grow in saline waters if we travel to himalaya we will find a rice that can tolerate very cold conditions we need to protect cultural and environmental diversity if we have to protect agro biodiversity otherwise all regions will be growing the same kind of crop protecting agro biodiversity also requires protecting the indigenous knowledge about it each variety has to be grown in a separate way how to plant the variety how to water it when to harvest it are very important questions farmers learn it through knowledge which is passed down through generations it is passed down in families 
or it is passed down and shared among villagers. It is often part of the traditional wisdom. In another module, we had looked at the concept of common property resources. These are resources shared by a group of people. Same concept can be extended to knowledge. The traditional knowledge is a commonly held resource of a community. It is shared by members of this community. It is transferred to next generations through cultural practices. It is an integral part of the community and helps them to survive. It evolves with the community and different members continue to contribute to it. It is a process of collective growth. The varieties of crops and animals are products of this traditional knowledge. These products are also handed down the generations. Seeds of special varieties are saved and passed down from one person to another. They can be shared among different households in a community. Animal varieties are exchanged by pastoral households. Knowledge and actual products are held together as common property resource. We have seen how privatization, globalization and commercialization is affecting common property resources. This threat has affected common land, water and biodiversity. The same processes are today changing common knowledge. We can understand these processes better if we understand the idea of intellectual property right. Intellectual property right or IPRs is a way of asserting private rights on forms of knowledge. In the last century, the idea of IPR was applied even for knowledge about bioresources. This raised many economic, social and ethical concerns. A person's intellectual property refers to his or her right over an idea or invention. It has emerged from that specific person's intellect. IPRs refer to a person's or organization's legal right over intellectual property. They give legal protection as nobody can legally use the intellectual property without the consent of the IPR holder. Suppose I create a new light bulb. It is my invention and it can become my legal property. No one can duplicate it without my consent. Aim of IPR system was to provide incentive to invent and innovate. In the past, inventors of the greatest inventions often died in poverty. They did not get anything, but others made profit out of their inventions. IPR system is created to ensure that the innovator gets adequate monetary returns for their own innovations. They need not fear being copied by somebody else. In a way, IPR provides monopoly rights over some innovation. It is generally for a certain amount of time. A patent is the exclusive legal right to commercially make, use or sell an invention. Patents are the strongest form of IPRs. There are different types of IPRs. Plant breeders rights, copyrights, trademarks are just some of them. There has been a great controversy about whether biodiversity can come under IPR rights. Wild plants and wild animals are created by evolution. Discovery of a plant which already exists in nature is not an invention. It cannot be patented by one person. But agrobiodiversity creates a dilemma. It has been created by people. A lot of innovation has gone into creation of animal and plant varieties. The question here is whether it is property of a single person or property of a group of people. 
Is it private property or common property? Can it be used freely or not? Crop and animal varieties are definitely created by a person. But it would not have been possible without inputs from the community. Many generations have given the basic material which has helped to create a new variety. So the actual breeder is actually just the end of a chain of breeders. Each country has its own solution for dealing with this problem of intellectual property rights of agrobiodiversity. There is a distinct difference between how developed and developing countries think. Farming is the backbone of India. We have many crops and animal varieties created traditionally. In the past, they were freely exchanged and shared. But today we are part of a world market. The rules for common market trade are defined by a global community. This has brought certain changes in the system of our knowledge. World Trade Organization was created in 1994. It aims to facilitate the business of producers, traders, exporters and importers of goods and services. It is a driving force behind globalization. It has good as well as bad impacts. WTO's efforts have increased trade but they have impacted the local communities quite negatively. Several organizations had led protests against the World Trade Organization. Changes in the global market led to failure of prices in Indian agriculture. Soya bean import drove out mustard as a source of edible oil. Before 1998, edible oil was mainly by the small scale crushers using local technology. In 1998, this was banned and soya bean imports were deregulated. Many jobs were lost in the local oil industry. This and many other regulations by the WTO led to protest on large scale by people all across India. In 1995, the same World Trade Organization laid out arguments of the TRIPS agreement. TRIPS stands for Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights Agreement. It is binding on all member countries including India. Its objective was to harmonize IPR systems throughout the member countries. WTO directed its members to grant patents on microorganisms, microbiological and non-biological processes. These were all used for making new plants and new animal varieties. They did not make it compulsory to grant patents on plants, but it was compulsory to grant IPR protection on plant varieties. Patents on all plant varieties are allowed in USA, Japan and Australia. In developed countries, business owners have invested a lot of money in creating new varieties. They use very expensive laboratory techniques. Tissue culture, genetic engineering are some of these expensive techniques. These companies argue that new varieties are their inventions. They want patents to protect their investments in future. In developed countries, patents can be granted even on genes or genetic sequences which are actually coming from wild organisms. Patents can be granted even if it's a discovery and not actually a creation. TRIPS gives unfair advantage to rich countries and corporates. It undermines the independence and innovation by traditional breeders. In response to this, developing nations created their own laws to protect the rights of people. India did not allow patents on plant varieties because it was very concerned about the rights of the traditional innovators. But it had to put in place IPR regulations. 
This led to formation of a law protecting plant breeders' rights. To understand this law, let us first look at what are plant breeders' rights. Plant breeders' rights are a type of IPR that is specifically applied to plant varieties. They are different from patents as these varieties are actually improvements and not inventions. In the past, farmers collected, exchanged and sold seeds of a crop. If a variety is protected under plant breeders right, it cannot be treated in the same way. It will be considered illegal to use it. The Protection of Plant Variety and Farmers Right Act was passed in 2001. It established an effective system of protecting plant varieties, the rights of the farmers and plant breeders. The act grants intellectual property rights to plant breeders, researchers and farmers who have developed a new plant variety. Farmers are free to save, plant, exchange or sell their farm produce. They can freely use the seeds as a registered variety, but they have to do it in unbranded manner. Farmers varieties need to be registered, but there are no fees for registration. Under this act, the rights of varieties are heritable. Indian law protects farmers as they are allowed to sell and reuse all crop varieties. In other countries, the breeder companies have actually sued farmers for trivial reasons. In 1997, American company Rice Tech was granted a patent for the name of Basmati Rice. It was not grown in India and it was very different from the actual aromatic Basmati Rice of India. This would have led to India suffering huge losses in Basmati export. Rice Tech's name was derived from Basmati rice, but it was not from India. It was not of the same quality as the Basmati rice. India protested this in the court of law. Finally, India won the case and protected its Basmati name. Rice Tech had to sell its rice under a totally different name. Although we won this case, there is a continuous threat to other crop varieties medicines, plants and animal products from India. India has asked that application for patents should mandatorily disclose the source of origin of biological resource and knowledge. It can help sharing the benefits with creators of the knowledge. But America strongly oppose this. According to them, it is legal and administrative nightmare. This kind of stand is only going to lead to more biopiracy. Corporates have better legal and technical knowledge. They have money to go to the court and protect their patents. But indigenous communities do not like this. They cannot go to the court of law. Developing countries also cannot afford to go to the court. Indigenous communities and developing countries in most cases do not want any privatization and commercialization of their collective knowledge. The Biological Diversity Act of India is another act which protects the agrobiodiversity and wild biodiversity of India. It does not allow commercialization without sharing the benefits with people who have created these varieties. We will look at this act in another module. The most serious threats come from some of the very new techniques of creating plant varieties. Commercial plant breeders extensively use genetic engineering to create new plants. In such cases, farmers cannot save and replant the same seeds. The second generation seeds will not have the same quality. Agricultural companies are also promoting transgenics. Transgenics are species in which scientists have introduced genes from some other species. It modifies the original properties. At one point of time, 
breeders used a technology called terminator technology. They introduced a gene in plants which led to formation of only sterile seeds. The farmers have to go back to the shop again and again because they cannot use sterile seeds. This was protested by everyone. India has banned the use of terminator technology seeds. Such genes can even escape in the wild and cause pollution of natural population. Bt cotton was a transgenic cotton plant. It had a gene from a soil bacterium called Bacillus thuringiensis. It made the cotton plant resistant to bollworm paste. This cotton performed well in some conditions, but it failed on large scale in other parts of India. This was highly promoted and farmers had invested large amounts of money in plantation of Bt cotton. Those farmers suffered losses. Many of the farmers' suicides were blamed on use of Bt cotton. This has put fear of all transgenics in the mind of Indian farmers. Following this, Bt brinjal, genetically modified mustard, GM rice and other crops were also supposed to enter Indian market. But there were wide scale protests from citizens all across India. The Ministry of Environment and Forest had to stop entry of GM crops. There is more fear because these crops are food crops. We do not know enough about what will be their effect on humans when they eat it. Many organizations from all parts of world have joined together to resist such changes in traditional knowledge and traditional varieties in agriculture. Agrobiodiversity is the future of our food. Privatization and commercialization can harm our food security. We all need to be aware about what are the threats to our agriculture and agrobiodiversity. As citizens, we should be well aware of what our own agrobiodiversity is. We should be aware about what we eat every day. We need to choose locally grown foods and local varieties. This is one way of protecting our natural and cultural diversity. If you are interested in this topic, you can read our e-text. You can also go through books and papers which are included in the essential reading section. I hope you found this informative. Thank you for staying with us.